Yeah, so, um, so this is the trigonometry review, which means um, depending on who you had as teacher and depending on how much you enjoyed the trigonometry or pre-calculus when you did it, either it's super easy for you or super difficult for you. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, my bias is that I really enjoyed the trigonometry when I took it, so I assume everyone else did too. <laughs> Maybe that's not true. <laughs> so, but the starting place is this Euler's formula, so let me write it down because you're gonna need that. e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And I keep telling you, the complex exponential is almost uh, magical um, in what you can do with it. And one of the thing is um, this uh, uh, formula called the uh, uh, Demoivre's formula that's proved using this relationship. So suppose you have any number. Um, in general, it would be a complex number. So suppose you have any number, and you want to um, you want to raise it to some power. Let me just keep it general and call the power x. Then, um, so this power could be a fractional power or whatever. Um, in general, if it's like a square root, it'll be complicated. So this is. Um, Using the comp this uh, polar representation of complex number, this is what you can do. This is equal to, so you, I can express z as a magnitude of the complex number times e to the i theta raised to power of x. And this is really why we physicists, engineers, like the exponential. Almost all the calculations ex involving exponentials are simple. Uh, different derivatives are simple, integrals are simple, power is simple because the exponential power rule says that when you have this, th this x simply multiplies to this existing power here. So this becomes r raised to power of x, hopefully you know how to do that, and you have e to the i theta x. So. Um, so that's equal to whatever this is. So, um, so that's where you get this right hand side um, by Euler's formula that, that this is equal to, I guess so, r raised to the power of x times, um, so this, so cosine of x theta plus i times r raised to the power of x sine of x theta. So that was the De Moivre's formula that hopefully at least got mentioned in your trigonometric class. Right, yes. So, um, so that's what the question is asking you to use. Um, so let's see. Ah, so, um, it, so exact number will depend on uh, how the question is generated for you. For the one that version that's generated here, it says, um, let x equal to 0 0.9. So I am going to use that. And it's looking for the fifth root of x. By the way, um, the number you will always, you will get this will, will be always a positive integer. I think it's, oh, sorry, positive uh, real number. Um, so I could have given you complex number, but I think that makes things too complicated. Um, so, um, so when you have this polynomial expression, g raised to the power of 5 is equal to x, what do you remember from algebra about the solutions to this? So this is a constant. And how many values of complex number g satisfies this relationship? Like from algebra in general, if you have some nth order polynomial, potentially how many answers are there? Five. Five, right? So here, five, or if you have n order polynomial, you have n. Like, so the quadratic, pol um, second order polynomial has potentially two answers. Um, uh, what's uh, the English word for third order? That's not quartic, right? Quartic is fourth order, I think. Cubic, yeah, cubic polynomial has three and three roots. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. Now, when you are limiting yourself to real numbers, sometimes you don't find all those roots. But the wonderful thing that you should have learned when you did, uh, uh, I guess, college algebra as part of pre-calculus 
is that when your domain is a complex number, you are guaranteed to find all those roots. And that's what you are going to be doing here. So x is some number. So you want to find all the gs that satisfy it. So all the gs that satisfy it will, give you, will, be, will be coming in this format. r raised to, oh, I guess, uh, let me, I'm um, sorry. I was a little bit haste in writing down this expression. So, um, so inverting this relationship, what you should have is, actually, can I? You know, I can't really invert the relationship because <laughs> um, uh, inverting implies a uh, one answer, one to one relationship, and that's not what I'm looking for. But so when I find the G's, this is what uh, G's are. Uh, so when I find the G's, the G's should be equal to, um, I can find one of them. So there should be a real positive solution for this G here. That's going to be um, X uh, raised to power of one fifth or, uh, you know, fifth root of x. So um, if I, I can't do that in my head, so let me do that uh, using Wolfram Alpha. So x raised to power, oh, not x, 0 0.9 raised to power of 1 over 5 should be, all right, so that's uh, at least one answer. Um, 0 0.979. And I'm writing this up because this is going to be a useful number. And the other answers you get, you get it through using this relationship here. So this is what I know. Um, expressing my um, g as some, um, let me express it this way. I guess it was not as, as easy as I thought it would be. So <laughs> uh, this is the relationship I want to satisfy. So let's call, me, call this g sub 0 for g sub one, two, three, four, the other four roots of this that I want to find, the relationship I want them to satisfy is this raised to power of five is equal to x. Or let me put it this way, the magnitude still, should still be the same. So it'll be this g sub one, for example, will be 0 0.979, um, so you know, when I raise this to power of 5, I'm going to get 0 0.9. And the second part, this is the important part where uh, you have to work this out, times e to the i theta 1 times, um, let me call it n, um, n? No, times five, um, because I'm raising it to pi, five. So times five should be, I want that to be equal to, equal to x, 0 0.9. So all the other solutions are, all the other solutions to this g is going to take this form. So we've actually found the one answer already, this one is where theta one is equal to zero. Then this is just one and you know, then that's the number. So for the next set of four answers, what, um, what condition do we need to impose on this? What condition do we need to impose on this? Because if uh, this is 180, then this will be minus 1. I don't want that. Can this uh, entire expression be anything other than 1? It has to be 1, right? Yes? Yeah. So this is an exercise on how many values of angle theta between 0 and 2 pi gives you this relationship. So theta 1 equals 0 was the first one. Um, and you know, if theta 1 is equal to 2 pi, then that will be another one, but that's the same as 0, so I won't do that. So let me um, guess at the next number. So I think this is what I really want. What I want is to be able to say that this particular combination here, whenever this is equal to 2 pi, 
times maybe a multiple of 2 pi, I'm going to get this whole thing to be equal to 1. Good? So yeah, so at this point, my exercise is in varying n. So I already did n equals 0. That gives me theta 1 equals 0. So the next value of n I'm going to use, n equals 1. So for n equals 1, this is what you have. Theta 1 times 5 is equal to 2 pi. So theta 1 must be 2 pi over 5. What if n is equal to 2? What, uh, uh, if n is equal to 2, what do I get for theta 2? Yeah, well, uh, this times 2, right? Yeah. So let me write it this way. 2 times 2 pi over 5. You see the pattern? So you can keep going with that with the theta equals 3 is 3 times 2 pi over 5. Theta 4 is equal to 4 times 2 pi over 5. And when you do the fifth one, that's when you realize you have looped around, so you are done. So for this question, it's asking you to find those five numbers. So uh, let me, yeah, um, I guess I should. <laughs> So let me, just as an example, find those numerically. That's why, why I wrote this down. don't know if that actually helps all that much. And um, I will um, write them out in this format. So what's the quickest way to do this? Um, when, I write, when I'm writing the question, I had access to the solutions. I didn't have to do the calculation one by one. Um, See. All right. So what you have is I have that 0 0.9 times whatever, and what I want to do is I want to write it as. Um, um, well, I guess I can probably do this exponential of i i times. Um, so the very first one is 2 pi over 5. So let me write it this way. 1 over 5 times 2 times pi. Let me see if uh, Mathematica understands me correctly. I'm uh, sorry, all from alpha. I um, think it did. And OK, and this is the result that it's telling me, so let me do that. OK, starting with the very first answer, 0 0.979, and following the format hint, separate by with the commas, and then 0 0.303 plus 0 0.931 um, i, comma. I needed three more of these. So now I formatted it this way so that it's easy to swap it out. One for two. And I get that. Can people read it or at least see what's there? Yeah, minus 0 0.792 plus 0 0.576 i. Um, if you prefer to think geometrically, what this is doing is, if you imagine them on a complex plane, um, they are at uh, five equiangular positions. So it, the tips would sort of trace out a pentagon, regular pentagon of a sort. Oh, a reattempt. Does it? OK, it's not worth it. Oh, so now it should work. <laughs> when you follow these steps, now it should work because we just fixed it. <laughs> Good? <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, so um, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have any mistake on the rest of it because it's algebraic expression. And um, so I guess if you are short on time, this is not super important for your exam one because um, you will see that when we go through the topics, a good chunk of your exam one is actually geometric optics. And for geometric optics, none of this matters. Even when you do wave optics, interference, um, this complex uh, representation, it's helpful when you're doing detailed calculation, like intensity of double solid, or, and that's going to be a small portion of your exam. So if you uh, are you know, running behind and you need to get caught up, then I wouldn't get too hung up on this. But being familiar with this will help you later on. Uh, as I, what, repeating one last time, 
uh, being familiar with the mathematics covered in this problem will help you when we get into quantum mechanics. Because um, quantum mechanics is where complex exponential becomes non-optional. It becomes uh, necessary to actually do the calculations.